Christian Parenting. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Join us for this special Christmas edition of Family Vision. Hi, my name is Millie Reno. Welcome to Family Vision with my parents, Dr. Rob and Amy Reno. Strengthening families through practical, encouraging, and real conversations. Hi, Rob Reno here with Visionary Family Ministries, here with my beautiful wife, Amy. Merry Christmas. It's almost here. It is almost here, just a few days away. Now, before we talk about Jesus as the light of the world, which is the focus of our episode mm-hmm. today, we want to give you all a report, give you an update on our VFM weekend away. I mean, for the last few months, we've been talking about yes. this weekend. Here it comes. We had 280 people join us up in Wisconsin Dells. We had a great weekend. Yes, we did. It was a really unique family experience. And honestly, it's been such a blessing to see this vision come to fruition. I mean, this is maybe our fourth one, but our second one with this model of doing it at a water park, at a you know a resort type area. Right. The exciting thing is just there's not that many events. Well, we don't know of any other ministries that are trying to do the exact same thing that we're doing, which is really teaching the generations together. You know, when you think about it, there's just not a lot of opportunities to receive instruction as a family, as a unit. You know, even when you go to church, you're often separated, right, for all your teaching. And you're lucky if you if you maybe circle around and touch base as a family is what you've learned that day. But we like to um, call it kind of immediate implementation of our visionary parenting conferences because parents and families are interacting and doing things, you know, on the spot. And the other thing that was just um just really exciting to see all the heart connection and heart connection happening on the retreat. I mean, that was just a real blessing to see. Yeah. I remember I asked at the end of the weekend, you know, kind of show of hands, how many of you are going home, you know, feeling closer to God and closer to each other? Mm-hmm. And almost every hand went up. You know, and we just talked about how Well, that didn't happen just because you went on a retreat. Right. What have we been doing? We've been worshiping together. You've been praying together. You've been opening your hearts to each other. We've been in God's word together. We've been having fun together. Laughing together. And laughing and enjoying these experiences. So that's what's creating, right, the acceleration of your faith and your walk with the Lord and the acceleration of your family relationship. So if you want that to continue when you go home, what do you have to do? Yeah, yeah. You, you have to be in prayer together as a family. You have to be in God's word together as a family. You have to be intentionally choosing things in your schedule that bring you together instead of things that constantly separate you. Yeah, pull you apart. The other thing I thought, you know, one of my goals for the trip was really to have families, you know, feeling that God is for them and not against them. Mm-hmm. I, I'm very burdened about, you know, the number of Christian families that, you know, are, are like I, they feel like they're doing all the right things, but they feel defeated in their everyday life. There's kind of this guilt, or we're not living up to expectations, and things are not going the way we wanted them to go. And so they end up going to church every Sunday, but often feeling more discouraged than encouraged. So our heart was through the worship and through the teaching that they would really just know. I mean, one of the songs we sang, you know, that God is for us, you know, not against us, right. and just to walk in that truth that Amen. you know he's leading your team he's not he's not the coach that's down there constantly telling you you're all doing a a bad job right yeah. he's the coach that is is leading you to the victory and that's what we were hoping for parents to and families to walk away with right. together yeah and this idea that god doesn't just love family as like an institution that he created, right? But he loves your family. Right. And he put your family together on purpose. Now, you might think that the combination of people he chose, right, is not a great combination. It's like the diary it, of wimpy it, kids, right, this quote. Just, yeah, just not this working. This combination is not working right now. <laughs> but yeah, we all feel that way. <laughs> right, but that's who God brought, right, brought right. together. Right. And a central teaching theme on the retreat was light. Yes. We talked about the very first thing God said is let there be light and that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. He sent his son Jesus as the light of the world. And uh, when we trust him, he lives in our hearts. And then he says, you are the light of the world and your home is a lighthouse. So all these different things we we talked about. Um, and it's here at Christmas time. And what do we have everywhere as lights. we're driving away? Lights, right? <laughs> I was thinking lights. about this the other day. And this might be a little weird. I'm so, still upset that the Tiber in our Christmas tree is going off before midnight. Just so you know, when you get home, we have to correct that. It has to go off at like 
one thirty. So the automatic timer. Yes, I changed it to one I know, o'clock. We're night owls. Well, it's you still obviously too early? didn't. It's too, <laughs> <laughs> I've been up a lot late, and those it's going things, off at like eleven fifty. So it's and just like, a lot harder. Those little dials and the little I know, pins. I can't work them at all. So that's why I'm giving you the message. I can't do it, but okay. you could fix it. I'm sure. <laughs> well. All right, here's where I was going to go in talking about Christmas lights. This might be a little weird, and I didn't try this on you yet to see if this was worth talking about. But I've had this strange thought, okay? Bear with me. Okay. Okay. Someone comes from another planet to Earth at Christmas time. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. And they're driving around. Yes. And they see lights everywhere. Not just Mm -hmm. in the United States. It's all over the world. They see lights in houses. They see lights on trees. They see lights in stores. There would be a natural question if you came from another planet, which would be, what's with all the lights? Why are the lights? Yeah, Yeah. right. And so the answer is, well, a baby boy was born. Yeah. Right? Well, okay. That's kind of normal. People decorate when babies are born. Right, we sort of. Well, well, when we had a couple kids, I remember we have a picture like I put a stork in the front yard with For a couple one of balloons. out of the seven. Hey, yes, listen, one of the, I yes. did it, okay. and it was there. <laughs> but my <laughs> point is, is that nobody else in the neighborhood put up balloons when our baby came correct home. Correct. Like it was a very yeah, the just, celebration just was yes. just just mm-hmm. us. Nobody else in town. Right. Um, so okay, so there's lights up all over the world because right. a baby was born. Well, when was he born? Right. Two thousand years ago. Well, was he born in your town? No. Right. He was born on the other side of, of the world. Even people who don't know much about him. Celebrate him. Put their lights up. Right, right. And have a big party and give gifts. Right. And I was thinking like Muhammad's birthday. Like we don't know when that it, is. It does not overflow. I did some research on it actually. Okay, and, okay. And in Islam, they do know the, the date or they right. celebrate it on right. a date. But it doesn't overflow into like global celebration. Correct. Like in Confucius too, they, they, there is a birthday supposedly. Right. But it doesn't overflow into global celebration. So why is Jesus so mm-hmm. different? You know, it's because he is different, right? He's in a category all by himself, right? The son of God, God literally sending his son as the light of the world. Yeah, that's a cool connection because he is the light of the world. And it, yeah, that's a, that's a very good connection. You know, so I, I love I, that. I, getting there with person from another planet, I yeah, that was the route. But I, I told know. you to bear with me. Right, right. All right, talk to, let, let's talk a little bit about some of the things that we're doing Advent-wise at home to, to help prepare our hearts. Okay, well— for Jesus. I have to give a little history, okay, because remember— Are we, we back to the stork? No, we're not back to the stork. But we had seven kids, and at the time, I had one advent calendar. So it was like, oh. as we added kids, it was just, you know, there's only 25 days. That means every person gets to do, like, one thing once. It's, like, you know, not very right. exciting. Right. So as a result of Everybody that— Everybody gets three right, and Right, right, and that's that. So and, yeah. because I'm all into, like, parties and celebration and yes. making things fun, so I kept adding advent calendars like so we'd get the chocolate calendar with the 99 cent chocolate calendar then there would be charts created by the kids of who gets what on this day and all of these things it was a very meticulous process sure. it's funny we flipped now that i only have three kids at home and i have six advent calendars <laughs> so now each kid i'm sorry each kid gets to do two, two. A day. yeah right it's kind of crazy when it used to be one every seven right days. no it's really funny but um so i've had to be really creative with them all i mean i keep the old ones we don't going have to be creative because you're doing six calendars no no but i like no i like to be creative so right. well, they tell all, everybody what we're okay, doing okay so so anyway it's just i think it's a little overkill is my point i don't want anybody to feel it like it takes a long they time should every day. Rec- i'm not recommending this necessarily it's just what's happening right now <laughs> so but we have you know your basic like, we do the Lego one. That got excited. Lego Star Wars yep. has been. So that's super just fun. Right. Um, always have to get that on sale early. Just a note to parents out there. Don't try to get one now. It's crazy expensive. So, um, But for next year, it's you could try eBay to get one. It's a good business, though. If yes. If you buy up 10 of them in October. Yes, you're distracting you me. But in. yes, yes. Um, that right. is true. Sorry. That is really true. Um, but then what I've done is just add to these personal advents. We had, like, I always do put a little piece of candy in. But we have... A prayer calendar, so the person who gets the um, Advent brings that to our family worship time at night to pray for, you know, who they chose out of the prayer calendar. So that's been great. And that could be a friend or a family oh, or families yeah. at church or— It's all sorts of things. We had enemies last, last night. Last night was enemies. Well, the kid pulls out the paper, <laughs> who are we praying for tonight? Enemies. enemies. Well, <laughs> well, Jesus says— <laughs> 
pray for your enemies. But yes, it was that was it was helpful. I went through that scripture with them. You right. don't naturally talk about that right. necessarily. And then we put, took out the enemies list and we <laughs> prayed through it. No, I did not take out an enemies list. There, there might have been a couple. <laughs> <laughs> we don't actually have a list written. <laughs> but, All right, keep going. Okay, I'm keep sorry. Going but anyway, so that was actually very powerful. And then we do. Um, I did. This is the new one this year. I added in the other chocolate calendar. I made it a service calendar, so that when they pick out their chocolate, they also have like a service that they need to do. And it can be, well, what's funny about that one is like, you know, Rush got it the first day was make Christmas cookies for the family. You know, awesome. The second one is like, you know, do the dishes after dinner. So people are like reluctant. I'm like, what kind of service am I getting today? Am I getting a easy one or am I vacuuming the main level? You know what I mean? So it's all sorts of different services. But I've been trying to figure out how I can yeah. get the service for me. So like one of them the other day yeah, was, was make right. someone else's bed. No, no. And I'm like, if I could find like, I hope that kid makes no, my no, bed. No, no, like, no. It said make I... mom and dad's bed. It, it was Yes. It was very specific. Oh, well and the done. other one Who was, wrote those? See, I wrote them all. And then, <laughs> <laughs> then there was make, bring dad a special drink. Yes. Well, I got that. Yeah. That was another one. They were excited to bring dad Orange a special crush drink. crush is what I got. Yep. Yep. So, so it's all a variety okay. of service, all different ones. Some neighbor focused, some, you know. Right. I love it. Yeah. All right. So back to the retreat. Okay. Um, we did a, a fun object lesson connected with this idea that Jesus is the light of the world. Right. Um, so I thought I'd share that story sure. here. So the scripture was John eight twelve, where Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Mm -hmm. So we talked about how there's only two ways to go through life. Either you are walking, you're following Jesus in the light, or you're walking in darkness. Those are the only right. two possibilities. So I brought three kids yes. uh, up front with me. And I said, okay, you guys are going to help me out illustrating this here. We're either walking the light or walking in darkness. And I had a, a little bag of candies, some Jolly Ranchers or whatever. And then I had a little Ziploc bag of broccoli, little right. broccoli bits. And I explained to him, I said, look, I'm going to put a piece of candy in one hand and a broccoli in the, the yeah, other hand. Which was just like raw broccoli raw in broccoli, your sweaty, gross in my hand. <laughs> Well, it wasn't. Well, I mean, I think that's gross, but anyway, yes. I, well, I understand. It's not like it was I, mean, wrapped I was broccoli. preaching, and I'd get me the no, no, but I mean, it's not like it's wrapped. It's, it's just a piece. Se. Well, it's just a piece of broccoli. Right. And I explained that to the children. I'm sorry they had to. Okay. <laughs> okay. I said to them, I said, okay, in one hand is the candy, in one hand is the broccoli. Right. And you won't know which one it is. And here's the here's the deal. Whatever hand you pick, you must eat whatever's in the hand. Right. I had three kids up there, so I turned away. And I put the uh, broccoli in one hand, the candy in the other, and I went to kid number two. And when I went to kid number two, I, I, shook, my, I shook my right fist, mm -hmm. right? And I said, the candy is in this hand. Mm -hmm. This is where the candy is. Which one do you want? Right. Kid number one, pick my left hand. Right, right. I said, okay. And so I didn't tell them what they got. So I right. went back to behind the scenes, you know, changed my candy right. broccoli again, went to kid number two. And on this one, again, I shook a fist and I said, here is where the candy is. Mm -hmm. Which one do you want? Again, kid picked the other hand. Right. I say, fine. Okay. I go do it again. I come back for the third kid. This is where the candy is. The third kid said, well, if you think that, if right, you say that's right. where the candy is, well, I'm picking that one. Right. So then I came back to him. I explained, all right, you didn't listen to me. I right. told, told you, you the candy right. was in this hand and you picked that. Here's your broccoli. Right. Here's your broccoli. Here's your candy. candy. Right. And we did that to illustrate, like, this is exactly the way Jesus comes to us. Right. He's, there's no tricks. He's not hiding anything. He says, if you want to walk in light... Yeah. You follow me. Right. Pick and this one. Pick this one. Right. Pick <laughs> choose this path. life. Right? Yeah, right. Pick and if this you path. don't choose this one, you're going to be walking in darkness. Right. Now, many of you listen to our podcast uh, on Spotify or Apple or whatever, but we are launching this as a video podcast now over on YouTube. And so go check it out over there. Check this episode out, episode out on our YouTube channel. And I've got the actual video clip of doing this object lesson with these kids. You'll really love uh, to watch it yeah, and see their- it's a good their, thing to show to your kids. And because, see their reactions. Yeah. It's a good thing to show to your kids because you've done that before on other- other camps, or I know I've seen you do the illustration before. And yeah, Pastor Michael uh, yeah. showed me the idea. He was well, the it's one the that majority, it. but the majority of yeah, it, that's it's interesting because most people don't believe they don't trust that you're I saying agree. telling yeah. them the probably truth. 60, 70 yeah, percent, probably, yeah, don't, don't want to choose. You don't, you, you even though, even, even though, though I'm you're being saying as, it's I'm, yes, and I'm not like being cute, 
I'm right. just being very sincere. Yeah. I'm saying, here's this is the, the candy. candy. Take the candy. And they still choose the other one. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it could be, is it me? Like, I'm just not a trustworthy person. Like these well, children that I've called up out of the audience just don't feel good about. I think that's an episode. That's another episode. <laughs> I don't think we can address that. Today. All right. Well, that's a good way to wrap this up. It is Christmas season and we have a gift for you. At our website, visionaryfam.com, in our web store, all sorts of books, all sorts of video Bible studies to strengthen your faith, strengthen your family. And here at Christmas time, if you use the promo code GIFT22, that's GIFT22, at our website, visionaryfam.com, you get 20% off your entire order. Please take advantage of that. It makes great gifts for your friends and family this Christmas. Uh, also, we'd love to have, encourage you to support our ministry partners, Christian Parenting. Family Vision is a part of the Christian Parenting Podcast Network, and we love partnering with them because they've got a heart to reach parents, reach families all over the world with the good news of Jesus. And like any Christian ministry, the end of the year is a really important time. So if you would be willing to learn more about Christian parenting, learn more about how your gift can make a difference for impacting families, you can learn more and make a donation at cpgive.org. That's cpgive.org. And as always, we want to hear from you. You can email us directly, podcast at visionaryfam.com. We'd love to hear prayer requests for your family, thoughts, reactions to our podcast episodes. And we look forward to our next time with you on Family Vision. Family Vision.